is Hannibal M. Piper here from the Hannibal TV dot com getting back from the gym while she was getting babysat by her grandmother and uh, I'm going to do a daily wrestling news update Piper what's that you want to stay on camera all right well the big news and this is a sad note Kevin Nash who I've wrestled before I talked about it last Sunday on the Great North Wrestling Podcast one of the the highlights of my career with Terry Funk refereeing, even though Funk should have disqualified him and didn't. His son has passed away. Uh, so I'm sorry to hear about that. His son was only in his 20s. And they've asked that uh, their privacy be respected. So... I won't uh, speculate, and uh, very sorry to hear that. Nakamura, a.k.a. Yakamura, as Sid likes to call him, is going to be making appearances for NXT. They had Kevin Owens on there this week, too, but AEW still beat them in head-to-head. Um, I do have to agree, though. Uh, I did watch the uh, a little bit of Rick Steiner's son. Braun Breaker, for whatever reason, they don't want to call him by the Steiner last name, even though they say he's Rick Steiner's son. Figure that one out. Makes no sense. Um, He does look like uh, he has a lot of potential. (laughs) I heard so much about this MJF promo with William Regal that was like 10 minutes or something. Um. I watched, I watched two minutes of it on, on AEW. They posted it on YouTube. He's First of all, it was just boring. To me, it was just boring. And MJF is just too small. Like, William Regal is not a big guy, and, and MJF looks pint size compared to William Regal. I know that wrestlers are smaller these days, but... Like he should be a manager. I can't take him seriously as a wrestler. I heard Kevin Sullivan, who I don't even think actually watches AEW. Some people, some people have commented um, that uh, Kevin Sullivan's a lot nicer at AEW. The the guys like uh, Dutch Mantel and some other old timers that that watch it. I think there's two reasons for that. One is I know Kevin Sullivan wants a job with him, but two. I don't actually think he he sits through two hours of AEW every week. I do know he recently said CM Punk was – he thought that CM Punk was the greatest wrestler of all time. And, yes, I, 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 I do listen to his podcast, actually, because um, it airs on this channel, and I, I usually listen to it because I'm a fan of Kevin Sullivan, and he, he does know a lot about wrestling, but – I mean, you, to compare CM Punk to the run that Hogan had or Austin had, I don't know about that. And and I even did see Mick Foley comment on CM Punk's post All Out promo, where he like just shit on all these people, and, and Mick Foley said, "You've just won like what's supposed to be the most coveted title in all of sports." And you go and you give like a bitter promo. Like, doesn't that devalue the whole title if, if all you can care about is is shitting on people after the promo rather than talking about how cool it is that you won the title? I know they fired his friend Ace Steel, who was involved in the in the post all out fight. I guess it's it's up in the air what's going to happen to uh, the Bucks and CM Punk, but. No, I wouldn't say CM Punk is the greatest of all time. If you guys ever watch the uh, the WWE event that I was kicked out of back in 2012, if, if you just search up Hannibal kicked out of WWE event 2012, all I was doing was like promoting an event and meeting fans outside, but it, there was like nobody at the event. It was like it was like practically empty. And that was that was what was so funny about it. I got to meet almost every single fan individually 
that, that came into the building. And of course, we didn't show it all on camera, but but CM Punk was actually headlining that show. And there was there have been three events in Ottawa that Hogan has headlined in the same town. And every time Hogan uh, has been to Ottawa, other than the last time, which was a SmackDown taping in 2001, uh, where he actually bled. I don't think he had a match. Kevin Nash against The Rock, I think, was the main event, possibly. Uh, Kevin, Na yeah, I'm pretty sure that may have been the main event. Definitely Kevin Nash was in it, speaking of Kevin Nash. But Hulk Hogan somehow ended up... Sorry, 2002. It was in March of 2002. And Hulk Hogan ended up bleeding somehow because I remember the front page of the newspaper the next day was Hulk Hogan laid out in the ring bleeding. And yeah, the I, I don't remember CM Punk being on the front page of, of the newspaper. But uh, but yeah, that was the, the two other Hogan matches I saw were um, – at the Ottawa Civic Center, which would have been almost sold out. I remember that all the seats were pretty much filled everywhere you looked. But that SmackDown taping on the very top level, there was areas where there were there was fans empty. But but yeah, I don't think CM Punk had the drawing power of, of an Austin or Hogan. And like I grew up in the 80s. I remember people walking around with Hogan shirts on and Austin shirts and NWO shirts. I don't remember <laughs> ever. I honestly don't remember ever seeing a CM Punk shirt outside of a wrestling event. I'm sure it happens, but back, back in the, the, the 90s, you would see NWO shirts in the mall. Or uh, it'd be very common to see or Austin shirts or Hogan shirts in the 80s, Macho Man shirt. But yeah, I might have to disagree with Kevin on that one uh jaron it hasn't been revealed what happened to kevin nash's uh son and yeah who knows i do remember i don't know if it was the same son but years ago there was some arrest related to some fight he got into with one of his sons but he may have had he might have more than one son but who knows Every time I've met Nash, which has only been twice, um, he's been been very nice. Ivan says Nash did not draw as WWE champion. Well, I did do a whole um, – I actually did two, two videos during the pandemic – of the highest and lowest drawing champions in WWE and WCW history. And Nash was in fact, one of his reigns was the highest attendance ever in WCW history. And from what I recall, it might be different since the pandemic, but by far the lowest drawing WWE champion history was Eddie Guerrero. Um, so Kevin Nash, I do, when he was champion, I seem to recall one match that I saw of him against Bret Hart in a steel cage in Hull, Quebec. And it was the the most full I've seen the Hull, Quebec arena. But at that time, WWE hadn't even come to Ottawa in like a year because I guess business was bad. And then they randomly came to Hull, Quebec instead of Ottawa which is just across the river. It's pretty much the same city, um, but different province. You just have to cross a bridge to get to it. But it's like a three or 4,000 seat arena. I've wrestled there a couple of times too. I wrestled Abyss there and I also wrestled for Jacques Rougeau there. But yeah, Nash wrestled Brett in a cage match there and the arena was not sold out but it was the biggest crowd I had seen in Hull. Because for a while, when Brett was champion, they also went to that small arena instead of the Ottawa Civic Center, which held 10,000. So um, Brett wasn't that great of a draw as a champion either. They only started going to Ottawa again when the new, uh, what's now known as Scotiabank Place, opened up. And uh, I guess 
they got a deal there and by that time uh business was was doing better what about yeah hogan likes to bleed that's for sure I, i'm gonna have to go back and watch it i forget what the hell hogan bled it may have been the nwo making him bleed but i remember the show ended with hulk hogan like bleeding in the ring and it was the first time hulk hogan had been to ottawa since like 1991 so it was a big deal that he appeared chris cannot stand cm punk This guy agrees. Pika agrees that CM Punk was not the greatest fault. I honestly don't know if Kevin took his uh, paid pills before that podcast or if he just really was an AEW job, but that was, that was a, one of the more mysterious podcasts. Someone joking about Hogan and Miss Elizabeth. Who knows if anything ever happened between those two. Crying says CM Punk is overrated. I was never a fan of CM Punk. I, I know he has he has his fans. I do find CM Punk more entertaining than MJF, though. I, I will admit that. I don't. I, I understand MJF kayfabes, but to me, he just talks a lot and rambles on like this William Rigo promo thing it was like ten minutes. I don't want to see a five foot tall uh, smidget as as. Um, Flash Funk calls them. They're not quite a midget, but not quite the same height as a normal person. I talk on for 10 minutes. I just I just can't take them serious. I want to see larger than life characters, but, but good for him for kayfabing. I appreciate it. All Pro uh, Seahawks says, yeah, he remembers the Hogan shirts were everywhere. I remember before I even knew what wrestling was, like before I even understood like what pro wrestling was. I remember seeing people wearing like the Hulk Hogan shirts with the rips on the back because there was the rips on the back. And like, as a kid, like you're walking around and these were unusual shirts. And, and yeah, I was like kind of intrigued, like even before I knew who Hulk Hogan was, cause you would see people walking around in those shirts so much. And you'd see people bandanas were in, in the eighties. And you'd see people wearing the Hogan and Macho Man bandanas a lot, too. CM Punk is probably just as big a draw in Chicago. Actually, they came back to Chicago since his original uh, United Center appearance. And it only drew like two or 3,000 fans. So the follow-up wasn't that good. And it was also for a TV taping. I remember reading that in an Observer review, which I probably talked about on here. Mike says CM Punk is a drama queen. Somebody somebody said the other day, and I think I have to agree with it, that the three biggest whiners in wrestling history, in no particular order, are Jim Cornette, CM Punk, and Bret Hart. I, I truly think they are probably the three biggest whiners in history. Bret Hart's a multi-multi-millionaire. Um, got screwed, went, made a fortune in WCW, then went back and made tons of money in WWE, was in a feature match against Vince McMahon in WrestleMania. And all he still does is whine. Colonel Quayle enjoyed my chemo interview. That's worth searching up, guys. If you haven't seen it, that was a few years ago. Search it up. Mike loves Nash. Jody says Punk's name suited him. What about says Drew McDonald isn't the lowest drawing champion? Well, probably uh, it wasn't Drew McDonald uh, the champion during the COVID era. As I remember, people were asking me to do it, so I did it. You guys could search it up. It was uh, my lowest and, and highest drawing champions. Uh, for WWE and WCW, as I'm going to sneeze here in a second. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, it was Eddie Guerrero was the lowest. And I forget who the WCW lowest was. But strangely enough, Nash was the highest drawing WCW champion. 
percentage wise. And yeah, Eddie was the lowest, which was strange. Eddie was lower than uh, Kevin Owens. WWE just canceled the show. Rock, thank you for the hashtag for myself. I appreciate it. Yokozuna, apparently he did better than uh, Eddie Guerrero. But yes, I do remember in that same arena, Hull, Quebec, that I was talking about earlier, they actually had Undertaker versus Yokozuna twice in there. One time it was the main event on its own, and the other time it was a casket match with Bret Hart against Jim Neidhart as the main event. And both times it didn't draw well. There was like just over a thousand people in there. Both times that was during the time where they were going to the small arena, which I think they went there from like 93 to 95 instead of the big Ottawa arena. They went to the small arena in Hull uh, during those uh, lean WWE years. St. Michael doesn't think anyone can stand CM Punk. He has his fans. He has his fans for sure. Hey, on is uh, 5'8", 130 pounds. Yeah, he does have a shot to be AEW champ. It was funny. Some people, I did put up a thing uh, yesterday uh, in my YouTube stories where I, I thought it was funny that uh, Jeremy Prophet, who I think is extremely talented, was uh, one of Nyla Rose's security guards on Dynamite in Canada. Yet um, they have like uh, I forget his name, the Dark Order guy, the fat. There's the fat guy uh, and Stu Grayson, Player Uno or Evil Uno, as he's known now, and, and Stu Grayson. And it's like Jeremy Prophet is so much better than those guys, and has wrestled so many bigger names on the indie scene, but because of politics. AEW will use him as Nyla Rose's security and use those guys on the show. Politics suck. And yeah, I do think he's better than Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, a hundred times better. They don't like him. That's probably why he's not in WWE. Probably because they know he's better than them and they don't want people that are going to be competition to them on the roster. But I thought it was funny. Somebody wrote Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn would have been main event wrestlers, no matter what generation they were in. I'm sorry, but Kevin Owens would not have ever been in a main event in the 80s. The, the jobbers were in better shape than Kevin Owens in the 80s, and he's not a real tough guy. He would have been weeded out real fast. And Sami Zayn would have been a manager because he's the size of a manager. They didn't use small guys in in major roles in the 80s. But, yeah. Ivan didn't like uh, WWE from 93 to 98. And Eric says CM Punk hasn't been able to come up with Summer Punk. It seems like CM Punk can only go a match or two without getting injured because he is actually injured again now and he was injured right before that and only came back, had a match or two, and gets injured again. He's very injury prone. I would just cut him loose, actually, rather than pay him for sitting at home. But but whatever. It's a tax write-off to Tony Khan, I guess. But anyways, I wish everyone a good night. I've had a few offers, by the way, at greatnorthwrestling at gmail.com for this Great North Wrestling title, which I'm putting back into storage on Saturday. Um. Offers that aren't good enough for me to take. So I will uh, dust it off again another time unless uh, I get something that uh, is worth my while to walk over to the post office and actually mail it off. Um, so if anyone wants to make me an offer on this title, it was held by likes of Davy Boy Smith Jr., Wes Briscoe, and the Blood Hunter seen here with the beautiful Melina who managed him before. What a physique on the Blood Hunter. By the way, I do have a patreon.com slash the Hannibal TV where I've recently posted some videos that um, some that have been taken down from YouTube and some I never posted on YouTube because I knew they'd be taken down because they were too hot. 
So if you guys want to see them, patreon.com slash the Hannibal TV. Wearing a hoodie is an odd look. Have you been to Canada? Let's see. Let let's see what temperature it is in 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 Ottawa, Canada, right now in Fahrenheit. Only know Celsius. It is fifty seven degrees Fahrenheit right now, with winds at twenty miles an hour. Um, and wearing a hoodie is a hood has always been my gimmick and I like wearing hoods. I'll work, I'll run in hoods. So, um, if it makes you feel better, go ahead, but it's my gimmick. And you know what? I'm doing pretty good. Just talking about what I don't like about wrestling for a living. Um, so yeah, thanks uh, everyone. And sorry, Kevin Nash. Uh, sorry, this caught, somehow we got talking about CM Punk. I forget how, but um, wish everyone a wonderful evening. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at